grace. And to hope that we see Job are taken. It's the Alpha and Omega. It's the beginning and the ending. And the Lord who he is, who wants that needs to come. It's the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending. The Lord that can do all things and not come and question him. It's the man of war. It's Jehovah Nisi. It's Jehovah Tekken. I want us to appreciate love for who he is. It's the merciful God, the faithful Father. It's a lovely God. Because if he 
is alive today. We won't, we won't just say Moses. So let's go to Exodus chapter 2. I'll read from Amplified Version. Now, Amram, as is a man of house of Levi, the priestly tribe, went and took his wife, Jochebed, a daughter of Levi. And the woman became pregnant and bore a son. And when she saw that he was exceedingly beautiful, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him and ark. She took for him an ark or baskets made of bulrushes or papyrus. Doubling it with mints and pitch. Then she put the child in it and laid it among the roaches by the brink of the river Nair. I want us to take note of that verse 3. After the mother gave birth, and she hid this man, this son, called Moses. Then the mother didn't, there was no name. We've not seen that the parents, both the father and the mother, gave this baby name. I want to think maybe because of the situation that was that was that was in that atmosphere or in that country where they sojourned at that moment. I made them not to give the child a name. Don't forget that Pharaoh has said it that whenever they see a, a male child from Israel, what did they do? They should kill them. Maybe that makes them not to give a, this child a name. But the mother saw that this, this boy is beautiful. I, I, I began to wonder that so they can say a man is beautiful. I thought they said a man is handsome. That this child was, was handsome, was beautiful, and the man, the woman, you know, a mother, had this child. He doesn't want the child to die, you know. And he, he puts what the son inside the basket and kept him where? Near the river Nile, the brink of the river Nile. And he seeks the Miriam, stood some distance away to learn what would be done to him. The sisters stood a distance to learn what's going to happen to him. It's, she stood there, you know, to, to, to know exactly what will happen to this, this boy called Moses. Then he has no name at that moment. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the bank. She saw the ark among the rushes and sent her maid to fetch it. When she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby cried. And she took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse of Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? I want us to know this one thing. When the mother gave birth to him, he hid, she hid this baby. She has compassion. She doesn't want, no, no matter wants anything to happen to, at least something dangerous to happen to their own children. She hid this baby. And after three months, that she could no longer hide him, she took him to a river. She knew that in, in, in that particular time, people would definitely come to water, to the river. Is that too fresh? Or to do something? And definitely, she didn't throw the baby inside the water, at least. But the riverside, you know, see people that will come to fetch the water or they come to bathe or whatever, they will side this baby. They will side the baby. And don't forget, the Bible makes us understand that it says the Miriam to the fair oh, to see, to watch what will happen to this baby. You can see compassion from the mother to the sister. And when Pharaoh's daughter went to the river, close to this, he sent his maidens, you know those kings, Children, both male and female, they all have bodyguards that follow them, the maids that follow them wherever they're going. So fear that is not go to the river alone. She went with her maids. And they saw it, they bring it. And they brought the basket. And when they, they when they unwrap the, the, the wrappers or whatever that the woman used, the mother used to wrap the baby so that nothing evil will happen to him. And what happened? Pharaoh's daughter also showed compassion. Because this child is God's, is a child of destiny. He has purpose. Before the world was created at that time, 
God has Moses in his mind and he knew everything that's going to happen. Moses was born when everything was just going, just like as this pandemic is going on now. And what happened? Pharaoh's daughter showed compassion. Bring it and the hope was, oh, this should be one of uh, Hebrew's child. Oh, you can take it Because he knew, she knew that none of the Egyptians would, would be there because the, the law or whatever does not affect them. It only affects the strangers. So he knew definitely this tribe belongs to a stranger, the sojourn in the land. So Pharaoh's daughter said, so go. And the girl went and called the child's mother. Before we he said, when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby cried. The baby cried. I, I'm alive, oh. <laughs> I'm not dead, oh. Show me pity, you know. And she took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. This is his sister. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse of Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? The sister now said, Yes, my brother is in, is in servants. You know, she stood a fire of washing the sink. So that she will know what is going to tell the parents what, what uh, will actually happen to that baby. And once she saw that the Pharaoh that died already there carried the baby, said, Oh, and then from where she was hidden, she came out and, and spoke to her. Can I call someone to come and nurse this? And the Hebrew went to come and nurse this child. Let's see what happened. Pharaoh just said to her, Go. And the girl went and called the child's mother. The sister went in where the mother was here, also hiding. Come, we have found favor. The king's daughter had found the baby and they have told her, Should I call the Hebrew woman to come and nurse? She did not know that you are the mother, just, you know. And the mother came and said, Then Pharaoh just says to her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. Can you imagine? A mother took the child and nursed the baby, and Pharaoh said she's going to pay her wages for nursing her own child. Another favor, because this baby is what? A child of destiny. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughters, and became her son, and she called him Moses. See, up to verse 10, they still called Moses, a child grew. Yes, no name. And the mother brought him. She returned her back to Pharaoh's daughter. She sent this baby back to, to, a, to his place of destiny. A place where God, where God has ordained. You can see how things is, is going on now. The mother prayed, the mother nursed the baby and she did not run away. She has to return the baby back to Pharaoh's palace. And then that's what happened. And he became our son. This baby became our son. And she called him Moses. Now it is Pharaoh that named the child. And gave him a name called Moses. For she said, because I drew him out of the water. That is the meaning of Moses. I drew him. From where? From water. So I want you to take take close close with the stories of Eva Moses. What kind of name did you and I would bear? If you closely look at the story of Eva Moses, you will know that the dropping close to the river Nile, we may go to, uh, go to explain more. Let's let's go then. You see that is the beginning of uh, Eva Moses. That's the meaning of that name, Moses. I love Jabez. When Jabez realized the meaning of his name, he cried to God. And God changed his name. Did the other Moses do the same thing? Let's see. One day after Moses was grown, it happened that he went out to his brethren and looked at their buildings and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew one at this Moses' brethren. How did Moses know that the Hebrew 
men. There are his people. <clears throat> Verse 12. He looked this way and that way. He looked both left and right. Let's see. What, 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 what was he washing out from? And when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptians and hid him in the, in the sand. He went out the second day and saw the two Hebrew men quarreling and fighting. And he said to unjust aggressor, why are you striking your comrade? And the man said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? The Moses was afraid and thought, surely this thing is known. You see, from that verse 11 to verse verse. 14. How Moses began to, you know, fulfill the mandate, the reason why God brought him to, to, to this world at that moment as a deliverer, to deliver the Israelites, the Hebrew, from the hands of oppressor. Right from there, the purpose, the reason why God brought him to, 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 to that country at that moment, he began, he began to fulfill it. And he saw that the Egyptians wanted to, you know, he killed the guy and then healed him. He looked left and right, whether anyone would see him. And the following day, when the Hebrew men, his brethren, they were fighting one another, and he said, Why are you talking to your family, to your brothers? And they shut up. Do you want to kill us the way you killed that? So he knew that, yes, there's no secrets. That's to tell you and I, there's no secrets. There's nothing hidden that cannot be known. That God will not show it at the at what at the appropriate time, and that also happened. So at least for Moses to do what to pick grace. Let's see, verse fifteen says, when when Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to slay Moses. He sought to kill kill him, but Moses fled from Pharaoh's presence and took refuge in the land of Midian, where he sat down by a well. See the journey of Moses from River Nair, and then he ran away from palace to where? To another country, Midian. Where did he start? He sat down by the well, water again. <laughs> so we need to take, we need to take a look of our life, the journey of our life. What are those things that is constantly happening to us? His name, because it was true. Because his father kept him near the river Nair, and that was why they call him Moses. And when he flew away from the from the past, where did he go to? He so went to another country. By the well side, why again? The well. Well, let's see. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the, the church to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, that is Jethro, the father, he said, How is it that you, you come so soon today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us from the shepherd. Also, he drew water for us and watered the flock. He, you know, he was positioned again near water. Don't forget that from the beginning when he was born and then they struck him at the river Nair. That is where people can come, they, they will be able to pay attention and see him. It wasn't in a hidden place. And then again, when he flew away from the palace to another, to another country called Midian, this guy also sat where? Near the well. Well, where people will come, where will they notice? Where will people will come and fetch water where he will see? The Lord positioned him again to that place. Why well? Water. Water. Moses has a lot of things to do with the water. And when the when the daughters came and then trying to daughters his father-in-law. Before he became his father-in-law. When they came and used shepherd stopped those ladies to fetch water. But Moses, because God has ordained him to be a deliverer, he stood up. And he helped them to fetch to water. And when they got back to their home, they found out, oh, you came quickly. What happened? What was the magic? What is the secret? What happened? And I said, oh, one Egyptian guy <laughs> ate us. And the father said, why didn't you bring him here? He said to his daughter, where is he? Why have you left the 
man, call him that he may eat bread. That he may eat bread. He may eat bread. And he was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Sipper his daughter. Moses was pleased to stay with Jethro. And what was his, his wages? The man said, okay, at least he can be of help. You have helped my daughter. So it means you'll be a good man. Then what did he do? He gave him a daughter as a wife and Jethro become or became his father-in-law. And she bore his son and called his name Gashun. That is a stranger there. For I said, I've been a stranger and a sojourner in a foreign land. However, after a long time, long time, nearly 40 years, the king of Egypt died. No disappointed for everything in life. Everything has its own time. Everything, according to the Ecclesiastes, he said, there is a time for everything. There's a time for us to come to this world. There's a time to fulfill what God has brought us in. And there's a time for us to go back. There's a time for Mr. Egypt to do what? The king to do what? To die. To receive his own boarding pass. And the transporter, death, took him away. The obstacles. He left the same. And the Israelites were sighing, groaning because of the bondage. They kept crying. And they're crying because of slavery ascended to God. After the obstruction had been removed, after 40, nearly 40 years in bondage, they sigh, they groan, they cry to their maker because of the slavery, because of the pains they're passing through in a strange land. I'm going to pause there and let's see what was written for us to, to learn tonight. When God asks you in his plan, he will guide you all the way, no matter what. If God has us in his plan, and I'm very sure God has a plan. He said the plan, the thought he has towards us is what? It's of good, not of evil. Before we are formed in our mother's belly, he knew us. It's not a mistake that. You have Mr. A and Mr. B as your parents. Or that country where you are right now. God has for everything. For everything we're doing on earth. No matter what. When God has you and I in his plan, he will guide us all the way. And don't forget also if you allow God to, to guide us. As I provide you this, he said, commit your way into the hands of the Lord and it will direct your path. We will do what we dress our path. Moses moved before God, before God was ready, and God into trouble for it. That's from the, the, the uh, verses I've read when he, he killed the Egyptian boy. There's an there's a lady that says, if you appear before your time, you will disappear. You and I need to learn from Elder Moses. A lot of things to learn from Elder Moses. One thing I want us to give that when we are reading a character in the Bible, a case study, don't, don't blame them. You learn from people's mistakes so that you will not fall to that error. You learn at people's mistakes. You learn at how people succeed. Learn the good part of them. Learn from the bad part of it. There's a lesson for you and I to learn. If you move before God, before God is ready, if you move before God wants to showcase you, my dear brother, you will, you will, you will do what? You will disappear before your time. So it's better for you and I to rely on God, allow God to showcase you, allow God to bring you out. Don't think, or don't, don't let us think we can snap God. Oh, God is slow. Ah, I, I need to come out. Who will back you up? When you, you when, when you showcase yourself, if you come out before your time, you it's possible for you to be what to be grounded. Except God show you mercy. He, he killed someone, and that was what made him to fled away from. 
the palace. Moses moved before God, before God was ready, and got into trouble for it. The priest became fugitive, but God did not forsake him. Because he was in the center of the plan of God, God did not forsake him. Because he is in the plan of God. It has been written before he was born that he's going to be a deliverer. Though he found himself in trouble for even the helpless, and at last he was richly rewarded. As when he left, he flew away from, from the palace, went to another country, millions, and then at the end of it, he helped them. And then he got the reward. What was the reward? They gave him wife. And the wife delivered a baby boy. And this, in the same chapter 2 of Exodus, we also discover that God will always hear the prayer of the burden and will never forget his covenants and promises. That is the last part of that chapter 2. After the obstacle has been removed, the king of Egypt died after a long time. After 40, nearly 40 years, and Israelites were sighing and groaning because of the bondage. They wept, they cried to their maker. And God held their signing. God heard their voice and groaning endlessly. Remember his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God remembered the promises that he had promised Father Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. God saw the Israelites and took knowledge of them and consigned himself about them, knowing all, understanding, remember all. If you and I can call upon God, he's ready to do what to deliver us. Let's see. Psalm 34, verse 6. Book of Psalm 34. Parents 
as a child. Don't they listen to us? They do. They do. So you and I need to cry unto God. Cry unto God. The same chapter, chapter 37, verse 3, 24 says, The step of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and in the light in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, but the Lord uphold him with his hands. The Lord uphold him with what? With his hands. Your vision is for a hundred times. It may tarry, but surely what? Surely, it will surely come to pass. If we can patiently wait upon the Lord, and let's ask the Lord to direct our paths. Lean not unto your understanding. Commit thy way to the hands of your maker. And it will see us through in the name of Jesus Christ. There's an illustration God showed me, and I tried to look at it that what's the meaning of this? You know, it just showed me a glass cup where there's water inside. And you know, Andrew Universal, or there's what we call work fast. You put it inside that water, you know, the water will not be settled. The same there's a gas coming out, or take for instance, if you have a, a water put it in a cup and there's a little bit, a little bit uh, germs or dirt inside or particles, you know, you'll be looking at it. And if you're very thirsty, you are very, very thirsty. So you will look at it as if you should drink it, or oh, let me wait a little bit, let the germs or whatever inside it or particles settle down. And when it settles down, so let me drink. See. That illustration is telling us if you drink that water, whether the, the particles of germs are settled down, the water is already contaminated. So if you drink it, you drink poison. So why don't you and I wait patiently unto the Lord? Be vigilant. Don't be. before the Lord. Let him guide us. Everything might not, might not look rosy, especially with this pandemic, with what is, what is happening in the whole world now. Don't be in haste. Let God guide you. Ask him. He is the one that has the manual in his hands, the manuals of our life. Everything that you and I will become on earth is in his hands. He's the only one that can give you the description of your life, the journey your on earth. Don't be in haste. Be patient with the Lord. He has a better water for you to drink. If only you can wait upon him. If only you can seek his face. If only you can allow him to lead you and not to tell him that, oh God, you are too slow for my liking. I need to move faster. Don't go ahead of God. Allow him to lead you. Allow him to show you the way. You are a man and a woman of destiny. But we need to rely on our maker. The one that formed us in the belly of our mother. That he knew us. He knew the reason why he brought your life to this world. Let's wait patiently before him. Let's seek his face. So he can direct our path. I know it's not it's not rosy. It's not it's it's things. That is happening now is not is not is not is not is not palatable or palatial. Yeah, let me use that word. But we must not go ahead of God. We have to wait unto God. Let Him direct us so that you and I will be able to fulfill this purpose why God brought us to this world. COVID nineteen is not going to last. It's not going to last. There's not that last that does not have end. It will surely go. But it now left for you and I to wait patiently unto God to give us direction what to do and how when to launch out and when to do what to restrict ourselves until God says go and then we go. Until God says move and we move. Moses said it in his rod. He said, if God will not go with us, if his presence will not go, then he will not move. He will not move. We know the importance of the leading of the Lord. We know the importance of the presence of God. That without God, they're not just like a fish. Can fish survive without water? It cannot. 
So let's rely on God. Most people might not be conducive. Things that are going on might not be rosy. But yet, let's wait upon the Lord. The one that knows everything. The one that made all things beautiful at his own time. Praise the Lord. The Lord will give you and I the grace to wait patiently before the Lord and to hear for him and, and ask him to his instruction. If you and I can do that, at the end of it, we will give glory to our maker. Praise the Lord. I want us to bow down our heads tonight and begin to talk to God. But Father, I want to thank you because you have reason why you brought me to this world. Lord, please help me. Help me to fulfill this purpose. For I venture I have gone ahead of you. Or I have not even waited before my time. Before you ask me to long travel. Lord, tonight I ask that you please have mercy upon me. In any way that I have cut the glory shut. In any way I have exhibit impatience. In any way I have not relied on you. In any way I have not allowed you to show me the way before I jump out. And I am and facing the consequence of not yielding to your instruction. Lord, please have mercy on me. Lord, I ask for your mercy tonight. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me for every wrong step I have taken. For not listening to your instruction. For not waiting patiently on you. Lord, I ask for your mercy tonight, oh God. Lord, please have mercy on me. I know you can revive the year in Brazil. Every wrong step I have taken in life has affected my destiny. And has not allowed me to fulfill purpose. Lord, tonight I ask for your mercy, oh God. As the Israelites cried unto you, oh God, that you show them mercy. And you heard their cry in heaven. Lord, tonight, hear my cry, oh God. I have no other God than you, Father. I have no other God. I have no other source. Because you are my maker. Oh God, help me tonight, oh God. I cry unto you, Father, and help me, oh God, to fulfill purpose while you brought me on earth, oh God. As you remove the obstacles, the king of Egypt died near the frontier, and that is when he said, I cry unto you, and you answer them. The Bible says, You're saying yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, we cry unto you tonight. You can still do the same thing. Oh God, arise, oh God, in every situation of our life that is not. And it's, that, and it's not good, oh God. And it's making us so weak in the night and the one that we cannot even share with men. We
in your infinite mercy. Could there be any way we have wronged you? Could there be any way we have appeared without waiting for you? Could there be any way that we have cut your glory short? Lord, so now we come to the throne of mercy, be merciful unto us, O oh God. Your word says, it is by your mercy that we're not being concerned. Lord, what we are asking for tonight is your mercy, O oh God. Father, please have mercy on us. Could you have been the sin of our parents or our forefathers that's affecting the purpose of our life? Tonight we ask. Show us mercy, Father. We just don't want to come to this world and go empty handed. We want to fulfill the purpose, purpose why we brought us to this world. Lord, please let the grace be raised unto us in the name of Jesus. It was written in your word that King. The Egypt's king died, and the Israelites cried unto you. And you remember the promise you have promised for thy Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. Lord, tonight, as we cry unto you, O God, Lord, in your infinite mercy, answer us in 
the name of Jesus. Cause us to fulfill destiny. Cause us to fulfill purpose while you brought us to this world, oh God. Father, whatsoever, whatsoever that represents the Egypt king in our life, and is that stand as an obstacle, not tonight. Let such be removed without any delay. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask as covenant standards as a cross darkness upon the earth. The Bible says the light shall in the darkness, and darkness cannot not comprehend it. So therefore tonight, we stand in authority in your name, and we declare your life in the four corners of the earth. Let the evidence that is convulsing, let a convulsion start, end tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your night penetrate to every area the darkness is hidden in our life. Let your light so shine that the darkness will give way in the name of Jesus. We invite you to show the Holy Spirit. Because when the head was without firm, the head was full of darkness. And the sweet Holy Spirit spoke upon the earth. And God presented the light and there was light. So tonight we will beckon unto you, sweet Holy Spirit, our comforter, our strength, our all in all. Move upon the earth tonight. And let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ. Move upon our destiny, upon earth, upon every presence on the earth. And let your light shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. We give you all glory, Father. We give you honor, we give you adoration. And we promise you, Father, that none will share the glory with you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a victory without the fact. Thank you for enabling us to fulfill destiny on earth. We declare ourselves as unstoppable, as untouchable, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Can we share the grace together? With the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, stay with us now and forever. Surely, His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shalom. Hope to see you on Friday in Jesus' time. God bless you all.